the sages said, Sutta, O blessed Sutta, disciple of Vyas, our obeisance to ye. It is due to thy grace that this wonderful story has been narrated to us, O dear one. Now tell us in detail, what did Vishnu do after Narada left him? And where did Narada go? Vyasa said, On hearing these words of the sages, Sutta, the wise and excellent scholar of Puranas, remembered Shiva, the cause of different kinds of creation, and replied. Sutta said, When Narada went away casually, Vishnu, skillful in wielding his maya, spread his maya as Shiva had willed. On the path taken by the sage, he created a big, wonderful city. It was a hundred yojanas in extent and surprisingly beautiful. It was far more beautiful than heaven. Many articles were displayed there. Men and women of all four castes stayed there. The wealthy and prosperous king of that city, named Shila Nidhi, was preparing for the gorgeous celebration of the Swayamvara, voluntary wooing of his daughter. Brilliant princes coming from all the four quarters, eager to court the princess, had thronged there dressed in diverse ways. On seeing such a splendid city, Narada was enchanted. With his love kindled, he eagerly went to the palace threshold. When the sage reached the palace, the king Shilanidi adored him, having offered him a seat on the splendid throne studded with precious gems. He called his daughter Srimati and asked her to kneel down at the feet of Narada. Being struck with wonder on seeing the girl, Narada said, O king, who is this lovely girl comparable to celestial damsels? On hearing the words of the sage, the king replied with his palms joined in reverence, O sage, this is my daughter, Srimati. She has attained marriageable age. She is in search of a qualified bridegroom. She has all charms and accomplishments, and her Swayamvara is imminent. O sage, kindly foretell her destiny, everything that is in her horoscope. Please tell me what sort of a husband she will get. By the time these words were spoken, Narada had become an agitated victim of love and desired her. Addressing the king, he said thus, O great king, this daughter of yours is endowed with all characteristics. She is highly fortunate and blessed like Lakshmi. She is an abode of all qualities. Her future husband will certainly be a splendid god, lord of all, unvanquished, heroic, on a par with Shiva, and vying with Kamadev. Having said this, the casual visitor Narada took leave of the king. Deluded by Shiva's maya, he was extremely oppressed by love. The sage began to muse, How shall I get her? And how shall she woo me among the princes in the Swayamvara hall? A comely appearance appeals to all women in every respect. Only by seeing a charming personality will she become enamored. Thinking thus, Narada, who was agitated by love, went to Vishnaloka to acquire Vishnu's form to captivate her. He saluted Vishnu and said, I shall tell you secretly my affairs entirely. When Vishnu, who did everything according to Shiva's wish, agreed and asked him to narrate, the sage said, The king Shila Nidhi is one of your devotees. He is a righteous king. His daughter, Srimati, is a maiden of very fair complexion and wide eyes. She has the luster of Jagan Mohini, enchantress of the universe, a manifestation of Vishnu, and is the most beautiful woman in all the three worlds. O oh, Vishnu, I wish to marry her without delay. The king, at the request of the princess, has arranged for a Swayamvara. Thousands of princes have come from all the four quarters. 
If you can favor me with a splendid form, I certainly shall be able to gain her. She will not put the wedding garland round my neck without your splendid form. O Lord, give me your form. I am your servant and favorite. Give me your beautiful form so that the princess Srimati may choose me. Sutta said, On hearing these words of the sage, Vishnu, the slayer of Madhu demon, laughed and sympathetically replied, bearing in mind the overwhelming power of Shiva. Vishnu said, O sage, you can go to the place where you wish. I shall do what is beneficent to you in the manner of a physician doing what is good to the patient, since you are a great favorite of mine. After saying thus, Vishnu blessed the sage with a form like his own and the face of Hari, that is, the monkey, since the word Hari means a monkey also. The Lord then vanished. The sage, thus consoled, became highly delighted on receiving Hari's form. He was contented, but did not know the scheme behind the scene. The great sage Narada hastened to the place where the Swayamvara was to be held and where the princes had assembled. O great Brahmanas, the Swayamvara Hall, splendidly decorated and graced by so many princes, shone like another council chamber of Indra. Narada too went in and sat down in the hall of the king. With his mind surging with love, he began to think like this. She will choose only me, since I am in Vishnu's form. The poor sage did not know the ugly character of his face. The men assembled there saw the sage only in his old form. O Brahmanas, the princes and others did not know the difference created therein. Two of the attendants of Rudra knew this difference. They had come there in the guise of Brahmanas to protect Narada. Considering the sage a fool, the two attendants sat near the sage and began to mock at him, seemingly conversing between themselves. See Narada's features as splendid as Vishnu's, but the face is that of a monkey, deformed and awful. Being deluded by Kama, he wishes to marry the princess. With these and other veiled remarks, they mocked him. The sage, overwhelmed by love, did not heed their whispers. He went on gazing at the princess Srimati and was eager to get her. In the meantime, the princess had come out of the harem, surrounded by ladies in waiting. The comely maiden came to the hall. With the beautiful golden garland in her hands, the princess of auspicious features shone in the middle of the Swayamvara hall like goddess Lakshmi. The princess, in search of a suitable bridegroom, went round the hall with the garland in her hands. On seeing the sage with the face of a monkey and the body of Vishnu, she was infuriated. Averting her eyes, she went elsewhere, being distressed in her mind. Failing to find a bridegroom of her choice, she was afraid. She remained in the middle of the hall and did not put the garland round the neck of anyone. Meanwhile, Vishnu came there in the guise of a king. He was not seen by anyone. Only the princess saw him. Then, on seeing Vishnu, her lotus-like face beamed. The comely lady put the garland round his neck. Lord Vishnu, in the guise of a king, took her with him and vanished from there immediately back to his own abode. The assembled princes lost their hope of getting Srimati. The sage, oppressed by love, became excessively agitated. Immediately the two attendants of Rudra, of perfect wisdom, disguised as Brahmanas, spoke to Narada. They said, O sage Narada, being deluded by love, you are desirous of getting her. Your effort is in vain. See, your face is as despicable as that of a monkey. On hearing their words, Narada was surprised. Deluded by Shiva's maya, he looked into a mirror. On seeing his face like that of a monkey, he became infuriated. 
the deluded sage cursed the two attendants. Since you had mocked me, you will become demons born of Brahminical semen and of that form. On hearing the curse, the two attendants of perfect wisdom remained silent because they knew that the sage was deluded. O Brahmanas, they returned to their abode and sitting there quietly went on eulogizing Shiva. They considered everything as Shiva's will.